Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning. Um, just one announcement, and that is um, the voters' meeting following the service today. Please remain. Um, uh, again, the meeting is uh, in order to call a pastor. So hopefully you'll all remain for that. Um, let us begin our service as we join in singing our first hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, 
I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the and unjust man, deliver me. I love the Lord because he has heard my, my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me, the pangs of Sheol, Lay hold of me. I suffer distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you deliver my soul. For you have delivered my soul from death. My eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man, deliver me. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Um, our Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke though I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law within them, and I will write it, it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading this morning is from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with, with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of, his, of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, 
You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them, and they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him, and after three days he will rise. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever you would be first among you must be slave to all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for men. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We join now in the confession of our Christian faith as we speak the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God. Who 
proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we continue by singing our next hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the gospel today, Jesus and the disciples are walking along the road headed for Jerusalem. As they walk, the disciples are amazed and afraid. Jesus seems to have a knack for getting that kind of reaction from people. He had just promised them that because they left everything to follow him, they would receive many blessings in this life and they would be persecuted. And in the age to come, they would receive eternal life. So these disciples then were amazed and afraid at the same time. So Jesus calls them all together and tells them what's going to happen on down the road. We're going to Jerusalem, he says, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him, and the third day he will rise again. Today and every day, really, by this word of the Lord, the Holy Spirit puts you and me on the road to Jerusalem with Jesus and the disciples. Like the disciples, we know what it means to leave houses and relatives and possessions behind. Like the disciples, we know the fear and amazement of hearing Jesus promise blessings and persecution and eternal life. And like the disciples, we are struck deeply in our hearts by Jesus' prediction of his betrayal, his cond condemnation, his mocking, and his scourging, and also 
his death and resurrection. These make us also to be amazed and afraid at the same time as we walk the road with Jesus to Jerusalem. In the church, we walk this road with Jesus throughout our lives. And as we walk with him, Jesus makes the same promises that he made to his disciples on that road that day long ago. There is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. As we walk through life, we are walking with Jesus to Jerusalem. We travel through danger and persecution and suffering. We travel under the great blessings of God. We travel with Jesus to the cross and to our death. We travel with Jesus into the grave. And by God's grace, we will travel with Jesus out of the grave into his resurrection and into eternal life. In the church, we make this trip with Jesus every year, especially during the season of Lent. We set our faces toward Jerusalem, and we give, thanks, and we give things up. We give up our sins and our trespasses through fasting and contrition and repentance. We give up our glorias and our alleluias, our festive hymns of praise. And we give up our gloria patris and our closing hymns. We give up banners and flowers and the chancel and altar cloths and altar furnishings and even our shiny brass cross on the altar. Giving up these things reminds us that as Christians, what happens in the church is what happens in life. We leave behind things we love to follow Jesus to Jerusalem. We walk the roads with Jesus all the way to the cross to die with him there. To die with him here and now that we might die with him forever. Or to use the inspired words of St. Paul, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. In this life, we don't always know where the road we walk will take us. I'm guessing that none of you here ever expected to miss church for months in a row because we weren't allowed to gather in large numbers in one place, especially in his church. I'll bet that no one thought you'd have to be seated six feet apart for a while and be wearing masks to protect yourself and others from sickness. And whoever thought that watching church on TV would be a thing. Yet that was and still is to some extent our lives this last year or so. I'm sure absolutely none of you sit around dreaming of living in assisted living or a nursing home, but you never know. How many of you avoid sitting around waiting, or, or how many of you actually do sit around waiting to become homeless and having to beg for food or money to, get, uh, to feed yourself? No one plans on a drunk driver crossing the center line and swerving into your lane so that you can spend months or even years in hospitals and doctor's offices. Living in Nebraska where no one is a stranger and everyone waves to everyone like you've always known them even if you've never seen them before. Did you ever think there would be so many people who would get gun others down 
with no, for no reason at all, even family and friends. And did you ever imagine that in these United States, we could be so divided? Has your life gone the way you always dreamed it would when you were a child dreaming those big dreams? I know that never in my wildest dreams when I was growing up did I ever think that I would be blessed by God to become a pastor and to serve His holy people here in Nebraska. And in fact, I think there were probably quite a few people who knew me that actually were shocked by the idea. Yet, here we all are. In this life, we don't know where the road we walk will take us. We don't know where we'll be five years from now or 10 or 20 years down the road. We don't even know what tomorrow will bring for us. But when we walk the road with Jesus, when we follow Him in faith to Jerusalem, when we follow Jesus all the way to the cross and all the way to the grave, when we do that, we know exactly where that road does lead. It leads to untold blessings in this life. Yes, there are those from among us who do live in nursing homes, who have fought battles with health, who have fought the enemy in battle, who've been knocked down a time or two, who've faced the evils of this world, the prejudices and hatred and divisions in our country. But this is where we live right now. This is where God has placed us for now, in this sinful world. And yes, we have to spend a lot of our time here. But it's also filled with brothers and sisters in the faith who love you with an undying love as Christ also loves all of us and who are walking with you as you walk through life with Jesus. And God is working through them to bless you with joy and peace in body and soul. And Jesus is walking right beside you and them to bless you with all that you need for this life and the next. The road we walk is difficult. It may even lead to persecution, maybe from the devil, from the world, or our own sinful flesh. But Jesus is walking down this road with you to bring you through this valley of the shadow of death, to comfort you with the rod of His law and the staff of His gospel promises. Jesus is leading you down this road of faith, and at the last day, He will welcome you into heaven with all the saints and walk with you into the perfection of the age to come, just like He promised. When we walk the road with Jesus, Jesus leads us to the cross. And though we suffer there with Jesus, we will be blessed with Him there too. By the precious blood flowing from His head, His hands, His feet, and His side. When we walk the road with Jesus, He leads us to the grave. And though we must die to follow Him there, He has made our graves holy places of rest by His time spent there after His death. When we walk the road with Jesus, He will lead us out of our graves and into the resurrection and into eternal life in heaven that He has prepared for us just like He promised on the road to Jerusalem. So today the Holy Spirit calls us to give up everything that keeps us from walking with Jesus. The Holy Spirit calls you and me to walk the road with Him to Jerusalem, to the cross, to the grave, to the resurrection, and into eternal life. And as you walk, you will sometimes be afraid, but you will most certainly also be amazed. 
as you walk with Jesus, everything you've lost and given up to walk with Him, you will receive anew a hundredfold. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands, and in the age to come, eternal life. And so along with the writer of the hymn, let us ever walk with Jesus. Follow his example pure through a world that would deceive us and to sin our spirit's lure. Onward in his footsteps treading, pilgrims here, our home above, full of faith and hope and love, let us do our Father's bidding. Faithful Lord, with me abide. I shall follow where you guide, and let us gladly die with Jesus, since by death he conquered death. He will free us from destruction, give to us immortal breath. Let us mortify all passion that would lead us into sin, and the grave that shuts us in shall but prove the gate of heaven. Jesus, here with you I die, there to live with you on high. God grant this for us all, for Jesus' sake. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, in these Lenten days we ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us to write your word on our hearts that we might know you as the God who forgives our iniquities and remembers our sins no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, bless and sustain our church and those who lead it, our synodical president, district president, circuit visitor, and all our pastors who, late, who, like us, are beset with weakness. Grant that they may deal gently with us and keep them faithful in proclaiming your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son came not to be served, but to serve. Help us to not lord our authority over one another, but humbly to serve one another in our homes, communities, and congregations as Christ has so humbly served us. Be with all those who serve us in any way, especially all those who serve in your church and all those who serve at great distances in your church, like missionaries Jana Engelhardt and Josh Lang and family. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, look in mercy upon all those to whom you have given earthly authority, our president, our Congress, our governor, and our state legislature. Guard them from the temptation to lord it over us improperly, that they might faithfully serve according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you watch over, protect, and defend us through the service of others. Bless, we pray, the men and women who serve in our military, who serve also on the police forces, the EMTs, the health responders, or first responders, health care workers, and guard them from the temptation also that comes upon them in their services, that they might serve us as you serve us, and like your Son, are often called to lay down their lives for us. Grant to them protection and peace, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as your only begotten Son learned obedience through what he suffered, we pray that you would bless, sustain, and relieve Nadine Petrowski, Kristen, Dylan, Courtney, Pearl Abrahams, Elaine Trainer, Anselm Wimmer, Bob Anderson, Bill Berry, Judy Johnson, Mark Weiler, Heather Wolfel, 
Alexandra Cole, an unborn baby, Donna Schilling, Leroy Wagner, Marlon Dote, Jim Svoboda, Landy Miller. Prayer, we pray also for successful surgery and continued healing for Don Woodka uh, uh, Lubker. Do you give thanks for the successful surgery and good reports for Steve Benny? And a prayer for the family of Mark and Lois Johnson on the death of Lois's brother Kenneth of Franz Lubers on Tuesday, March 16th. We pray your blessing be with all those who suffer in your midst, that walking in the ways of the cross with your Son, they may know the fullness of his eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, you have delivered our souls from death, our eyes from tears, our feet from stumbling. Comfort all who mourn with this truth, that they may not grieve as others do who have no such hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have baptized us with Christ's baptism to be our God, that we might be your people. Grant us faithfully to drink from his cup in the blessed sacrament, that he might sustain our life in him with his flesh and blood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, dear Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying Holy, Holy, Holy had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. 
Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise. The body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We join now in singing the post communion canticle. <coughs> Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn. 